Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how I edit drums in Cubase. Now part one here is going to be all about the setting up of the session prior to the actual editing. Part two is going to be all of the editing stuff. So go ahead and skip to that if you need. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to put all of the drum tracks into one single folder. So I've already done that. This allows us to use the group editing function here, which is going to be important for slicing and for quantizing and all of that fun stuff. Um, second kind of big thing um, is that you have to set your tempo throughout the entire session before you're doing any of the editing. So we're going to be slicing and quantizing the drums to the project grid, which is these lines. And the project grid is going to be determined by the tempo. So if that's not done, then all of this editing is going to be pointless. Um, so now, firstly, to set everything up here, is we have to determine what's going to be our priority tracks for the beat detection and slicing points. So I'm going to choose the kick drum, snare drum, and toms. These are all close mics, which are good for using as a reference for slice marks. Um, now I have multiple mics for the kick and the snare, so I'm only going to use one of those mics as the uh, priority. So I'm going to do the kick in, snare top, and then the three toms. So, um, firstly, before you do this group editing function, before you enable it, go into those priority um, tracks here. Um, and we're going to set the threshold here. So Cubase normally has a uh, automatic hit point detection. Um, I think that's been introduced in Cubase 7 or 7.5 or something. Um, usually gets things pretty good, but this was the threshold that it was set at before, and it was picking up the snare hits as well. Now we don't want that. We only want the kick drum to be um, detected here as a a hit point. Um, so let's go ahead and set a threshold. We want this because that's a kick drum. So we want it low enough so it catches all of the kick drums, but high enough so that it ignores the snare drum. That's about a good threshold. Now we're going to do the same for the snare and the toms. Snare drum, this threshold was way down, so it was getting the kick and the hi hats. We don't want adjust the threshold properly somewhere around here tom mics we're going to find an area where the toms were actually hit so in this case right here i think the threshold was somewhere here we're going to adjust that to around there this one Same thing, threshold was too low, set it a bit higher, so just those tom hits are being detected as a hit point. And same thing goes with this tom mic. It was set too low, so we're going to adjust that. Alright, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to section off the song, this entire song, into different little pieces. Um, the reason why we're doing that is that the drums will change within the song. So like for the chorus, there's there's a different drum beat going on. It's quite similar, but there's different things going on. So we're going to segregate those into pieces. I've already marked here with markers where I wanted to uh, cut these things here. So you're going to activate the group editing now. You're going to put the slicer. And you're going to slice at the beginning of each of these sections here. So just like that. Another thing you want to look out for is if you have, let's say, a drum fill that uses triplets, uh, triplet timing, instead of 
non-triplet timing, then you might want to go ahead and find that section and slice that up as well. So that when you're editing and you're doing your slicing and stuff and quantizing, that it's going to be quantized to the proper grid. So that's it for part one. Part two, we're now going to look at the editing.